Hello, welcome to Spurred On. Now, you will have seen Harry Kane and Ryan Mason playing in the England internationals, or at least on the bench a little bit. Uh, and the fact that they're included in the squad for the England team means that Spurs are now the team who have provided the most England internationals, joint with Aston Villa at 73. We are clearly a provider of England legends, homegrown talent. That's us, Spurs. But we have provided a few duds, which I need to apologise for. So I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to go through my top five worst Spurs players for England. Should I say that last sentence again? So what is it? What, what even is the sentence? Top five worst, worst England, England players supplied by Spurs. Is that what we're calling so it? It'll probably be top five worst England Spurs, Spurs in worst, top five worst England Spurs players. So, <laughs> so here's my top five worst England Spurs players. That is a mouthful. In at number five, my boy T Huds, Tom Huddleston. He was not bad, really. He was a good player for us, certainly, but he never really hit the mark internationally. You know, he was called up by Fabio Capello uh, and he played as a sub in three friendlies. Um, and that was kind of it. Got into the preliminary 30-man squad for the 2010 World Cup. Never really made the final 23. It was a shame because technically he was like a very sort of slow technical player, pinging passes everywhere. You'd think he'd be perfect, more suited to the international game. Uh, but fierce competition at the time, Lampard, Gerrard and the rest meant that he had no chance. Number four, David Bentley, or as he calls himself, the next Beckham. Actually, it was Steve McLaren who originally coined that, the idea he could be the next Beckham, the next number seven. And he was the next number seven in the sense that he played only seven times for England. Uh, he got an assist and was man of the match when he first got called up for the England B team. So everyone was like, this guy is going to be great. Then he was asked to play for the England under-21s, which he turned down due to fatigue, meaning that Stuart Pearce questioned his commitment. Then when he finally got the call up for the senior squad, he was jeered by the fans due to that very lack of commitment. He also pissed off Fabio Capello uh, because him and Jimmy Bullard used to have a little prank game where they would try and say Postman Pat as loud as they could to him in his presence because he didn't speak the language and didn't understand the reference. It culminated in him essentially screaming Pat in Capello's face and never playing again. Beckham would never have done that. Number three, Paul Robinson. England's number one would scream around White Hart Lane all the time. He got 41 caps for England, uh, but he made a few too many mistakes, just like he did for us. And that is the reason he makes my list, even though he was quite consistent. Up until the point he made his first mistake, he had six clean sheets in a row, one away from equaling Gordon Banks' record. But then he made a terrible air kick against Croatia. Gary Neville back pass, the ball bobbled, went over his foot and went in the goal, went down as an own goal. That is where it all started to crumble for Paul Robinson. Confidence disappeared. He then made a mistake against Russia where he palmed the ball out, giving an easy tap into Spurs hero Roman Pavlyuchenko, although he wasn't Spurs at the time, uh, so it wasn't any tricky business. Uh, and then he got dropped. Scott Carson replaced him for the actual important qualifier against Croatia, and then he made a horrific howler, worse than anything Robinson's ever done or anyone's ever done, including some pretty bad historical figures, and we failed to qualify for the Euros. Absolutely tragic. Number two, speaking of England's number one, England's number 40, Ian Walker. He only got four caps for England, which is a shame because he needed a few more caps to cover that awful hairdo. Uh, he uh, was made a lot of mistakes. He wasn't great in his four caps. Most notably, his appearance was the 1-0 defeat to Italy in 1997 at Wembley, where he conceded what was considered to be a bad goal to concede against Gianfranco Zola at the near post. He got a lot of stick for it in the press, got absolutely lampooned by the media, which I think was unfair because it was quite a good strike, the kind of goal Jermaine Defoe scored week in, week out for Spurs and quite often for England. I think it was fairly unfair, but no one ever really forgave him for it. He never really played for England again. England number 40, Ian Walker. Number one, Anthony Gardner, big, slow ant. Anthony Gardner, I mean, it's suspicious he was even in the England squad, especially suspicious because he got the call up from Sven Goran Eriksson to play against Sweden, very suspicious Sven. And he, was, he replaced John Terry at half time, even more suspicious. And then early in the second half, Zlatan scored and we lost 1-0. I mean, unbelievable secret agent stuff there. This is a conspiracy theory. Sven, he picked Anthony Gardner because he knew he'd mess it up and he knew that Sweden would win against England. This is a conspiracy. I'm replacing the original conspiracy theory, or is it me? Who knows? Who knows? It isn't, but it could be. I want that job. Anyway, this has been my top five England duds from Spurs, or whatever this feature's called. I don't know anymore. Leave your other ones in the comments. Let me know who else I should have included. I considered Darren Bent. That's an honourable mention. Another honourable mention goes to Jermaine Defoe, the Cisco years. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV. One, two, one, two, three, four. The